Hi everybody, welcome back to Borderlands 3. My name is Mikey Dubs and we are continuing our Monarch. We are on day number three, farming Kilovolt, that perfect farms, mm, perfect parts Monarch. We've we've kind of leveled up our strategy here a little bit so we can take out Kilovolt a little bit more efficiently. So we're gonna sit back here at maximum range with our fish slaps. And even if he does go into his invincibility form just for a moment, he will not be able to survive our second volley. We're at 112 runs. Last episode, if you missed it, I was responding to all the comments I had received. I even put the comments on the screen. Ooh, wow. If that's something that you want to have happen, leave a comment down below. And even though I do record in batches, sometimes I will have um, comment videos and I will just be putting those up. So be, be on the lookout for those. But my action skill to get it on cooldown or get it to end so I get a bonus melee damage to help the fish slap. Oh, one, one HP left. I'm going for actual one shots. So here I just toss a couple racks, make sure I have grenades. And then I just toss fish slaps until he goes down. Pretty quick. No legendaries. I'm going to stop running over there and I'm just going to quickly save quit and move on. So instead of do listening or reading comments this time around, I'm actually going to be going through my Borderlands 4 wishlist. I've wrote it down over here. I got my BO4 wishlist. And I'm going to be talking through it. We have a bunch of farms to do. So but, buckle up, buttercups. It's going to be a bumpy ride. So coming in at my number one most requested thing for me. And I I don't necessarily think there's any kind of order to this. Wow, that was pretty good. I'm, I'm not going to put any kind of order to this. But it was the first thing that came to my mind. Uh, and it was bank filters. The way the bank filter works now is that it, you can filter by type or item score. It doesn't it doesn't make it easy to just simply go to class mods you still got to scroll all the way down i just want to be able to just have a folder for each type of item so that's assault rifles class mods uh relifax those kinds of items just give them their own bank slot allow me to allow pc users to have a search bar like or, to, or just any user to have a search bar why not just just give us a search function that way we can find exactly what we're looking for in a timely fashion Make sure that we just use our action skill. Keep it, keep the uh, the the anointments running, the action skill and melee damage anointment that I have in my guardian angel running, and then that way, no matter what, a heat kill will die. I've I've been waiting to use my peregrine class mod. I still do not have one from DLC four. I need to find time to go push that storyline with a schluter on, find a decent mini boss to get the peregrine class mod. Um, the actual farm source is Dr. Benedict. I don't know how easy that farm is going to be. If it is easy, then I might get my drop that way. If it's not easy, then I probably would just go, you know, world, uh, world drop farming at different boss locations. We are really close to one-shotting this lad. Yep, because I, I threw my, my grenades late there. We're not going to get the shot. We are so close to one-shotting this guy. We, I even I went back and respect some points in my build to get some points into the blue tree so that I could boost up my elemental damage. There's this right here, barbaric yacht, four out of five. But I think I could go even further in this tree. I would just would be giving up points in this this skill tree. Which I don't necessarily need for this kill, anyways. But I can go get more damage. There we go. Got a little bit lucky there. Oh, he's down. Let's see, we got a class mod. A red fang. Excuse me. Thank you. Got a red fang, shotgun, pistol, and Jacob's weapon reload speed. I mean, that is a hell walker red fang. If I've ever seen one. They go up to 115. So, or 116. So number one I have in my list is bank filters. I want type, manufacturer, rarity. And I've heard some things that some other people have said about being able to save builds where like you could have like a spot where you just all i have to do is hit one button or like click a few times and then i can put on a, my a build that i've saved previously although that would be a nice feature i don't really think i need that i think it would kind of take me out a little bit of the immersion of of oh no one shot come on it would take me a little bit out of the immersion of always swapping my gear like on my own it should be free there we go we got him that's pretty quick honestly even if we don't get the initial one shot and we get our first monarch here there's no barrel on it or there's no are you gonna go down to one no you're not i want to check out my monarch thanks 
So it's a vicious, a vicious monarch. It's 12.66 damage with no elements. So it's going to be a little bit low on damage. It does have a melee damage boost. Oh, yeah, it does have a blade on it. Let's check out the parts. So it's got all three bodies, all three barrels. It's the grip, so this is not... It could be a damage or projectile grip. It's neither. In the four grip, that really let it down. In the site, you can get a reload site, so that's the one I'll be going for. But hey, we got ourselves a monarch. So I'm, I might go back to Sanctuary and Respect so I can try to see if I can guarantee those one-shots. Um, because I can get them, I feel like, sometimes. Sometimes with the, with the build I'm currently running. Let's just toss this action skill. It's going to end now. Toss my grenades from as far away as possible. That, I feel like I've gotten one shots in the past. That's okay. We just spam our action skill. Get a couple grenades back. Why not? Make sure it stays on. Well, we ran out of grenades. See, this is a problem. I mean, we can always spam our action skill to get a couple of our grenades back, but we really want to be getting that one shot like right off the rip. Good night. What you want? Well, missing missing is not good. Good night. Oh, vault card level up. Let's go. Let's go to our vault card right away here. Clear it out. Because I can... I'm trying to get myself a new Schluter roll. So that way it actually has stats on it. How crazy would that be? So it's my vault card. Here we go. No. Which one is the vault card? Here we go. This one. Open up a chest. Please, three keys, three keys, three keys. Yes, three keys. Huge. Okay, here we go. The Schluter. Let's see, what did we get? What did we get? What did we get? What did we get? Is that... What's going on here? I already had one on me, I thought. Did I spend my keys? Oh, I have to go to the mail? Social? Mail? No, that's not how it works. Did I not get... Did I get gypped? But I already had a Schluter. Reroll item parts, five. I thought if you get another Schluter that you get stats on it. Am I under the wrong impression? Oh, here we go. Ravaging Schluter. Air effect damage, incendiary damage, and shock damage. I mean, that is pretty good. Um, yeah, that's, that's really, really, really good for what I'm going to do next. I think it's going to help me this like with, with Peregrine builds in general. Very cool. All right. The counter goes up one and we move on. So I, I personally don't need a save build or a build saver in Borderlands. I could see them doing it like a quick swap between different specs. Completely, completely understand um but i don't need a i don't need a, a, a build saver okay at my number two spot i have co-op quality of life changes so borderlands 2 i think actually did co-op a little bit better than borderlands 3 so we will be using some borderlands 2 tech here um but the first one is down indicators when when an ally of mine is down i want to very clearly see that they are down i don't want it to be somewhat vague than having to give me a shout out like Ally down should be the biggest thing on my screen. What is that on the ground right there? Okay, it's a monarch. Clear him out, out, out. Okay, it's a vicious monarch with weapon damage fade away on it. Unfortunately, its damage is not so great, so. Is he seriously going to leave it there? Yes. Yes, he is. Okay, so when my ally goes down, I don't want to be... be Thinking like, where's my ally? Where's my ally? It should be very clear to me where my ally is, okay? That is number one. I also put in here, hi highlight allies in green, question mark. I don't think that would be like the worst change in the world. Just highlight my allies in green. I, I think that would be a nice quality of life change overall. So we can see where they are at at all times. So you can fight together easily if you want to. Or fight separately easier if you want to. I think this pet is blocking one of my grenages from hitting. Keep spamming action skill. Get our grenades back. Maybe we'll get the one shot here. 
Nope, he still gets his invincibility phase. That's fine. I still have enough grenades to get the job done. You really do not have to move at all to get, to get this kill, I feel like. Never mind. I have to land a perfect snipe. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay, no Monarch. Oh, did I hear something? No. So no, no Monarch, unfortunate. So yeah, so highlighting allies in green is something that I think could be could be pretty cool. I've also some, something I'll talk about later on. I won't I won't talk about it now, but I, I kind of like that idea for even more of the game. So next thing for qu quality of life co-op change, don't drop party uh, on save quit. I don't like the save quit meta in general. I don't like how that's like how you farm for stuff is by save quitting. But I, I understand it. I just do oh there's a one shot. Nice. Let's go. I understand why like it exists i just to me it takes it it takes me out of the immersion right it, as soon as i have to quit the game go back to the main menu see my character it's like immersion is gone i want farmable ways that aren't save quit ideally but if save quit remains in the game which i'm sure that it will can we have a, a system that we don't have to rejoin someone's party every time i would love if we could just stay in the same party i don't know if that's at all possible let's just jump for my third grenade so i don't accidentally hit my pet with it Okay. Lost me. Should work right away. Nope, doesn't work. Dang. Don't get that one shot. But as far as co-op quality of life changes, I think th those are the big ones that that I am got have my eyes out for. So like, I really hope that they implement those changes. Um, specifically, being able to see my allies down, maybe highlight them in green, and oh, nice hornet on the ground. I like them in green and not drop party on save quit. Those would be some nice quality of life changes for co-op. Number three I have here is less legendaries, both in quantity and in drop rate. So this is specifically from Borderlands 2. A lot of the legendaries, including even the Monarch, is like a 16.5% chance to drop. I think it's a little bit high. Um... I think it is a little bit high to to have that big of a drop chance. Might have trolled it right there. Yeah, I think I might have trolled it. I think it's a little bit troll troll to have drop chances that high. Um, that being said, it does help like the god roll farmers at the end of the day. But god roll farmers are gonna do their god roll farming like regardless of the amount of drop chances. You know, you don't have to worry about them so much. Do a couple more, then try to predict. Okay, ready? Prediction night but even if we don't do it perfectly like we still get we still get a pretty quick clear time here so again less legendaries both in quantity and in drop rate i there are so many legendaries in borderlands 3 i i think there are way less in borderlands 2 i kind of like the idea of there being less total i don't i, I don't know what it is but i kind of want like a more sophisticated metagame when it comes to purple and blue weapons and green weapons then i would like a metagame where it's just a ton of legendaries i don't know what it is about me that makes me that think that way but to me it just feels like we the pool of legendaries is so overloaded in borderlands 3 it's not like i can't even like i can't even learn them all that well you know there's just so many again we just spamming we just spamming to get the easy clears here we got a leggy drops nine volt we go back we go again so i would like to see less legendaries but have the legendaries i think borderlands 2 did this really well where they just take the base versions of the of that manufacturer like a drew for instance right and then they just ramp it up ramp it up and so like the ogre did a great job with this the kerblaster did a great job with this they just took the pre-existing models and just ramped it them up and i think borderlands 3 does that uh, quite well with stuff like stuff like the monarch like the skull masher um, they do a good job ramping those weapons up but they also really flood the pool with somewhat like the same version of that it was like it's the same molly one pistol ramped up at first it was the hell hellfire no the it was the hell shock then it was the beacon then it was the free radical and i get the how they're different they have differences but not really like not in not in use like not in function they they function almost exactly the same so when it comes to 
legendaries i want their functionality to be one of one they what they do what they do best and if they do something there's not another gun that does the same thing better like i get there's always going to be a meta but like the shredifier nothing spits bullets like the shredifier you know in this game you have like the monarch and all different kinds of weapons and you have the super shredifier but there's just so many other guns trying to like get that the dictator the ogre like there's just there's just so many different guns the damned you know th i don't know th that feels like their roles there's so many legendaries per role like and that's r o l e like like you're rolling a play you don't you don't need to have so many legendaries and if you want to have all these crazy fun unique uh weapons which i i think is a good idea then filter them out with their own rarity or filter them out with something else legendary should i think be like every manufacturer's peak model you know like every manufacturer showing like strutting its stuff this is what we can create these are the legendaries that we can put in the hands of hunters you know nine volt okay we run it back i think next video i'll probably have a hopefully a peregrine class mod i've been looking at dead eye class mods i don't know how exactly to boost the damage right now of this this fish slap i mean i have and i could get a bladed guardian angel i have melee damage increase on it i could go to my other guardian angel but i think i put it in the bank no it's right here weapon stats effects let's try this we get 100 percent melee damage let's see if this one shots no it doesn't so this one has a different anointment on it this one has elemental stats effect damage is up 75 percent which is what the only dragon is using here we go not slow not the quickest but not slow either now let's go in there and grab it and get out but i could i could ramp up this damage even more i could get pack tactics in the blue tree i could get that last point in the skill that gives me bonus pet bonuses at the end of the day it, to me it just seems like i i'm gonna have to make a choice whether or not i want to be bossing or mobbing uh so But if I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using the Paragon primarily, at least at first, for fish lap synergies. I just need a little bit more damage. Yeah, I think, honestly, it might be worth going back and respecking, for specifically for this fight to go faster. And I'll, I'll do that, and I'll show you guys the differences in what I do. I'm going to get back some, some Grenages here. Right, he should spawn anytime now. Legi. Nada. Nunca. Nunca. Zilch. Okay, so what I'm going to go back to Sanctuary here. I'm going to respec and I'll be back. Okay, so the skill tree is pretty spread out here. We actually only have the green capstone, which gives me basically just flat damage from high health, which is nice. But the big thing that we added was the last point in Barbaric Yop to give us more pet bonuses, which we will be choosing the Scorcher pet. So the Scorcher pet comes in here to give us bonus elemental damage. And we also have all the points in the pack tactics that we can. Just giving me bonus damage. And I'm actually going to go to my bank and grab a stack bot that gives me more points into pack tactics. So I actually put on this trainer class mod because it has three points in pack tactics. Which is going to give me 42% damage. Which is super, super nice. Alright, let's see what happens when we get out there. Okay, so we're here back at Killable. Let's see what we can do. Please one shot. I'm begging you. Oh, not even close. Do I have everything on? Yes. Unleash the dragon. I, I, I'm using the trainer now, but maybe that's just the. Oh, I didn't know why I had my my jabber out. Okay. Hopefully that. Hopefully the scorcher will do enough. Will do enough. To, uh, <laughs> bonus damage. That's gonna be that. Those are the five points that we took right here. That's gonna be the difference maker. We get to a pretty good A-B test. We did about 90% of his shield on that run. Switch it for pets. Let's go for the bonus damage now. Come on. Toss that. Okay, come on. Don't do me dirty, Scorcher. Don't... 112 million? Thanks, bro. He's like, yeah, I got you. 
Holy, and we got a nice looking monarch to boat. Okay, no, no enemies spawn in. Let's take a look at it. Holy. This is the fastest fire rate I think I've seen. It's the, I think of all the monarchs that I've gotten. Let's see. Yeah. Of the 1287 nines damage, this one's the fastest fire rate. This is my new, this is my new god roll. Let's check this out. I think this should be best in slot of everything. All three bodies, all three barrels. Good. Grip is fire rate and weapon sway. You should actually, you don't get damage in the grip here. You get fire rate, but instead you get damage in the foregrip. I think this is, although I think I might prefer damage damage. This is pretty nice. I would say it's really close to a god roll. I, I may, might include it in there. But. Pretty nice. So this one's grip is a fire rate grip. Understood. Alright, let's go again. Okay, number four. On the Borderlands 4 wish list. Is a solid mix of enemies. We're talking beasts, humanoids, and robots. So... Borderlands 2, I felt like, struck the absolute perfect balance. And I get a lot of that is probably... And I'm dead. I get that a lot of that is probably due to the nature of who we were fighting. It was like Hyperion and all that jazz. And I, I completely... Oh, no one shot. Okay. I completely get that. And I would like to say that... I don't think that you can be fighting the same basic robots every single time. But I did feel as though Borderlands 3 was very humanoid heavy. Or not necessarily humanoid heavy, heavy even though it kind of was. It's way less robots. I get you're not really fighting robots in this game because you're fighting COV and Mala one most of the time, right? Those are humanoid enemies. I, I get that. But to me, it just, I wanted massive mobbing areas of armored targets, of shielded targets, you know? In this game, you really only get red health bars. Sometimes shield, sometimes armor, but red health bars. It's at the very towards the very end of the game you start getting shock enemies, like some of these Iridians, but not enough to call it like a shock based area, you know? I think what Borderlands 3 did do was throw in a lot of enemies of different kinds of health bars within oh what is that? Within the the mobbing sections of just red health bars, right? You had you know some of the armored dogs and shield shielded dogs and different kinds of things. Oh, these one shots are getting nice. Yeah, I'm happy we did that respec for sure. The scorcher, it, it feels nice to have the scorcher be the reason I'm doing so much damage. You know, like we are heavily invested in pet bonuses, and the pet bonus the scorcher gives us is elemental damage. So thank you very much. For what you're doing for us? I'm hoping that Borderlands Four will have more mobbing areas of armor specific enemies and maybe even some areas of shield specific enemies where it's just shields right only shields that way your shock weapons have a time to completely shine you can say even though you can say well shock weapons always have a chance to shine uh a lot of the time it's just because they can shred shields i don't know you don't have to i just want areas with where different elements are like it you know swapping elements mid-combat doesn't appeal to me like so so much i guess it's a core part of the game but it doesn't appeal to me 100 percent you go again so i wanted to within that conversation talk about number five and that is reduce elemental immunity i think a big way that they make this game harder is by giving you elemental immune enemies. You know, the, the pyrotech, the nomad pyrotechs in BL2, right? Um, and the, the uh, I forgot the name of the skag that resists fire. There's a sk the skag that resists fire. Like, that's a big one. I don't necessarily think that that is, like, the way to go. A Dobby the Monarch, really low damage, not even fast fire rate. You don't, you're dead to me. You don't even exist. You're not even on my radar. I don't necessarily like 
having a whole bunch of elemental immune enemies like i don't like red health bars that are immune to fire to me that this is a, that doesn't feel good it feels like it's going against like the rules of the game i am 100 percent for being if, if you want to throw in an end game area if you want to throw one third fire one third armor or sorry one third flesh one third armor and one third shields at me right in an end game area like that's what i have to deal with that's fine I, I'm, I'm down for that but I don't want to see a whole bunch of enemies that are red health bars that are immune to fire. That just, to me, that doesn't feel like it sets in the spirit of the game. And I felt that a lot when I was playing Ms. Mose. It's like, oh, I'm the fire character. Like, you gave me really strong fire damage. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can, well, I, I thought to myself, I'm going to see if I can make a fire build that just pushes through everything. Right? And what I found was the Pyrotex, they would kind of stop that dead in its tracks. Like I couldn't really only focus on fire. Like it wasn't my only damage source. I needed to diversify in some way. I couldn't just force all fire. So it just feels kind of bad that like I want, and I wrote down in my notes here, let solo element builds shine. If you want to go ahead and take the damage negation of using the wrong element against the wrong enemy, but it somehow works for your build, it somehow works for your character, like it has nice synergies, I want that to be, I want that to be like more present in the game. I think that that is some, that's the type of play style it should be heavily, heavily rewarded. Rest now. Your hunt is over. It's uh, like a flak build, like a, oh, there's a Monarch, let's clear him. Like a flak build that uses uh, the reflux, and because flak has this skill in his orange tree, it gives you bonus armor damage against robots. But it actually, what it does is all it does is boosts corrosive damage. You can fight back against the damage negation. Ooh, okay. There's a, it's a ten thousand damage monarch. It's shock. Let's go check out these parts. I don't have that much faith in it, but let's see. Two body accessories. It's missing a damage one. Three barrel accessories is good. Decent grip. Could do better on the foregrip. And a nice rail. Okay. Not not a, a god roll by any means, but still decent. So I I don't want to be encountering a, a whole bunch of fire immune enemies or shock immune enemies or radiation immune enemies. I would rather you just throw different kinds of enemies at me and let me let it be on me to either swap weapons or have a build that's so powerful in one element that I can push through. But you can, you, I could say, I would say you could even punish players harder for using the wrong elements. Like really, really punish players for using the wrong elements, but still keep kinetic. Still keep kinetic strong. Because that would give kinetic a very clear niche. If kinetic is strong against everything, even armor, which I think they should rework this. If kinetic is strong against everything, even armor, right? Just flat across the board. That gives kinetic a very, very clear niche. And that niche is I'm good against everything. I'll never be the best, but I'm good against everything. I think maybe because I'm throwing that first name and I'm a little bit forward. Okay, there we go. Getting a couple one shots now in a row. It feels good. Excuse me. Fish slap. Optimized carrier. Nope, we're good. Keep moving. So I think that if you punish players more for using the wrong elements in the late game but give back to players as balancing less elemental immune enemies that might be a healthy change for the game right if and remember that infamous call with more and after kill in the 2k marketing room group where they were saying players don't know how to use the elements make it very very obvious it, that using the wrong element is an absolute no-go you know like this is by the way this is a complete toss Keep tossing racks out. They'll get kills eventually. Come on, spawn back in, homie. There. Now he's gone. Rack time. Toss me. No more shield for you. He's out of options. He's out of moves. There we go. No ledgy. Pick up my iridium, though. Very nice. Let's go. 136 runs so that's that would be the rework i would do to elements 
no more elemental immune enemies or very few of them and just punish players harder for using the wrong elements and then make kinetic 100 percent damage against everything stop giving kinetic weak weakness against armor i don't think that's that doesn't feel good the kinetic already is the, the worst element because it doesn't make use of elemental damage bonuses so dang we're not getting one shots not not consistent one shots anyway He's gonna get away this time. A few my grenades so late. Ah, actually, we made it. Okay, cool. No drop though. Get my iridium and head out. All right, so number six here, and this is something I talked about heavily in my BL2 versus BL3 video: visual pollution. And I'll knock this one out quick. Um, I've talked about it at nauseum, but three quick things: uh, brighter lighting. I, I think that. The we would be able to if we could see enemies better that it might help us out a little bit being able to see enemies a little bit better um especially against very in very dark locations having to fight enemies in the shadows can be very very annoying um number two number two part of that is higher contrast and this kind of goes into the same lighting and shadows i want less shadows more lighting so i can see who i'm targeting in, the, in these type of environments, there's way less light sources than back in the day on simply Pandora. Like, sometimes the light barely gets into the windows. Like, where's the light coming from here? It's coming from... It's coming from this a little bit. This bright yellow light, you're trying to tell me it's just, like, coming from the outside? Like, there's not that much light. Here it is. Got a light right here. So this shines all the way up to here, which shines a light onto these locations. But there's just less lighting. I, we, I wish I could see enemies even in low lighting a little bit better with higher contrast. And the third part of that is visual uh, effects. Whenever you shoot an elemental gun, do you see how... Do you see how... And I'll even pause it. See how wide these pellets are? And it's not just the Guardian Angel, but see how many pixels wide this elemental effect is? It's several pixels wide. Right? If you just make that much, much smaller so that there's barely any of this brightish color and just brought everything in and everything in, that would be a lot, a lot better, I think. So let's take, um, let's take, it's not as much of a problem on kinetic weapons. But let's take the Monarch, for example. So do you see this? This is a lot better. How, see how, see how this is barely, barely, barely visible? That is what. That is what I'm talking about when I need very small visual effects. I don't want a, a whole bunch of them at all. And you could take these these explosions at the at the target location and dial those back as well. Even though you do want to have some of that satisfaction, it just makes it so hard to see your target. So, and that just the visual pollution ramps up and ramps up and ramps up. If you just dial everything back, everything back, and I think it might it might make up for some of that. Okay, number seven, remove damage anoint or remove damage from anointments, but keep Vault Hunter interaction anointments. So, anointments are a hot topic when it comes to Borderlands players. Some people swear that they should just be removed, and I think there's not as much of a vocal crowd saying that anointments should stay. I personally feel as though anointments are, are cool. I like anointments slash enchantments from Wonderlands. I don't think that they should go anywhere. That being said, it does feel really bad to have your anointment dictate a, a very large percentage of how much overall damage you can do. I get that that is a, that is a, a pretty big function of how multiplicative damage works. But at the same time, like 100% damage boosts are just just all over the place from different anointments is kind of like a little bit over the top in my opinion. Wow, we actually gonna have a pretty a pretty bad one here. Also, action skills. Go. Should be seeing him soon. At which point, something will connect, whether it be an action skill or a grenade. Okay, he starts strutting. We start chucking. He actually he actually juked away from my grenade. There we go. He's down. Oh, looks like he dropped something for me. What is it? 
This slap goes away. It's a high capacity warlord. No thanks. Go again. Okay, so how I think where I land and where a lot of people I think land is have keep anointments but bring them down in overall power significantly. I think I watched a Killer Six wish list video and he mentioned how Wonderlands brought down the power of anointments. I haven't checked them myself recently. But I, I believe, like, yeah, they, they, it would make sense for them to ramp, bring them down a little bit in that game. But I want to bring them down even more personally. Like, I don't think that they should be, um, that they should be dictating your build. I think that they should be min-maxed pieces to a build, not a build around, if that makes sense. Like, if you get it, you're like, oh, like, I am a min-max. Like, it's like I got the better foregrip or I got the better sight, right? Excited that you got the better version of the weapon, not... Oh, I need I need this anointment to make this build function. Now, in saying that, I really like the idea of Vault Hunter specific buffs. Um, things like while Fade Away is active, get a trigger. But there are some that completely change the way characters function. Like there is a the Spore Warden one from Wonderlands that okay I think it's the pet messing with me there's, there's a spore one of one that triggers like this poison effect whenever you hit something like i like the idea of having cool anointments that become build arounds with special interactions what i don't want is universal damage just just because you got a consecutive hits anointment that gives you 100 percent bonus damage or a next two mags like i get next two mags being cool but I don't need next two mags as much if you don't put so many elemental immune enemies, you know? So, if you want to keep the damage, the damage anointments in the game, which I don't think you should. I really think, I wrote down here, give me anointments that give me movement speed, reload speed, accuracy, handling. And I even put it on my notes here, maybe only have one anointment available. And this could kind of be like a balance lever, where keep, keep anointments strong. Keep anointments really cool. Have anointment speed build changing and game breaking but only allow you to have one anointed piece of gear per character right and if you have multiple pieces of gear that are anointed you choose which one gets the you choose which piece of gear is your anointed piece of gear could be kind of cool to set up a system like that i think um i've heard of, of systems like that with the with the next um wish list item that i have at number eight here but it could be cool to have a system where maybe your anointment is really strong and it is a build around but you have to sacrifice you know your movement speed to sacrifice your accuracy your reload speed things like that action school cooldown i think that could be like really really big on your on your weapon like my what my weapon is for action skill cooldown so i can spam more and my anointment reflects that or you know and if you do have a damage one right if you do have a damage one make it a small damage boost make it like three percent more damage for like the real min maxers out there that want that big damage boost give it like three to five percent bonus damage don't go anywhere above that i don't think i don't think you need it i don't i don't it doesn't feel good to get it but if you give it like maybe that small damage buff that's okay this is a pretty awful monarch it does have a lot of fire rate very a lot of like a lot a lot of fire rate but and this one's magazine size is 44 i must have a magazine size buff or something on me mag size mag size hmm i thought they were, I thought they were all 40 okay whatever moving on So I think you could rework anoints in that way. If you want to keep anoints the same way, I think on weapons, if you want to have damage, then give it, then have like 5% da damage. You know, this, this whole action skill end, get damage stuff, doesn't really feel so nice when certain characters get left out in the cold, you know? Uh, speaking as a most player, who doesn't get to use action skill start and stop stuff. Speaking of which, and this isn't on my notes, and I wanted to maybe add this in here, the existence of this anointment on action still start activate any effects that trigger on shield break or fill the existence of this anointment is interesting at the very least to me it's interesting because it, it turns a lot of shields into offensive powerhouses 
right it takes shields that are meant for defense and it turns them into offensive powerhouses because you can use them on command i kind of like it when your shield is not a powerhouse damage spot i don't necessarily like the shield being involved as much in offense i kind of like bo3 on release where the transformer kind of felt like it was outputting the most deeps i mean we didn't have the revolter we didn't have the super soldier we didn't have we did have the frozen heart we didn't have the, the infernal wish the mana well the the old god we didn't have these so the transformer was kind of like yeah that's that's the one you go for especially because it makes you immune to the killable fight which is where that's where all the flax got their monarchs so by the way how about these one shots coming in just like like it's nothing like really speeding up our clears now it's only a matter of time i still haven't seen a times eight monarch though which is depressing <laughs> So that's what I think about annoyance. Small bonuses, triggers, I don't really like action skill, and I, I, I think just straight up passives would be nicer, maybe. I'm not too sure. But I just, as long as they're not as strong as they were in BL3, and anywhere, anywhere close to as strong as they were in BL3, I think I would be happy. I kind of like, I kind of like the idea of being able to reroll annoyance at high value, high costs, to give late game currency. 150 runs, congratulations, we made it everybody. I like the idea of having high cost rerolls to give Iridium that, that big value. And I will, I will come back to Iridium here in a second. So at number eight, I have something that other people have definitely mentioned, pearls. Um, or just a more exclusive rarity type. I think that if you add pearls, everything I said about the legendaries can go away. I think if you add pearls and instead just make the pearls the best and baddest that each manufacturer has to offer then you can do whatever you want for legendaries you can make a, you can make 10,000 legendary weapons i wouldn't care right as long as i have like that that one rarity to chase that's the biggest and the baddest you know it's very clear that the shredifier is the vlad off weapon of choice a cloning hunter seeker with bonus radiation it would be nice if it was radiation off the rip, but it's not. We go again. So, pearls. I think you can have pearl grenades, pearl weapons, pearl shields. And an idea that came from Wonderland's Redux was the idea of only having one pearl uh, active at a time. Once you equip a pearl, you cannot equip another pearl. I thought that was a really good idea. That way you can have build arounds. You know, I think the idea of build arounds is is really really cool like every pearl should be like a build around item okay so yeah i think i think they should bring pearls back the randy's comment about how that there wasn't enough dicks disc okay disc space um makes sense to me i'm you know, if he says it like that, if it, he's the way he he said it, you know, it just it just make it it makes sense. They would have to sacrifice something to get it. But I wish that maybe we could get pearls back. Um, I think they're capable of it. I think it's possible. So pearls is big for me. It, as long as the pearls are not just pearls, but they represent the best of what each manufacturer has to offer. And if you do that, I think you can do whatever you want for legendaries, right? You bring you bring in pearls. You can make legendaries as vast and numerous as you want, as long as there's something to chase. Okay. At number nine, I have arms race or a rogue lands type mode. You guys here probably know that I run a lot of rogue lands on Borderlands 2. I think that game mode, that mod, represents kind of like the epitome of what a Borderlands style roguelike could be with great map design, awesome enemy variety, amazing loot mixed with fast and furious character design, uh, character um, decision making, right? In a, that rogue lands type mode, you're getting fed five skill points at a time and you can skip, you can basically experience the, the power curve of Borderlands at a much faster pace, which is incredible. One hour runs, 
for a rogue lance mini f feels like about right to me and then you know oh man so monarch low damage though high fire rate but low damage we go again so a roguelite type mode right at the start um chaos chambers is similar to that you know it's like a roguelite where you lose you go back to the start um I, I will count it. I will say that that is. If you were to put cash chambers in the game, I would I would give you credit for having a roguelite type mode. But maybe arms race with action skills, right? Arms race with action skills. That that could be you know good enough for me. Or maybe arms race with skills, right? You're already getting rid of all of our gear when we go in a pack and devastate with consecutive hits. Just saying, we're already getting rid of all of our gear. You know, let us let us earn our skill points back one point at a time. You know, as we as we you know, earn experience in the world to start spamming us with levels just so we can level up um let's experience that and that that whole borderlands play style and what that might do is and and have it so that you can access that mode with any character right so you don't have to play the entire game to experience what flat can do right you maybe you could tie it behind maybe beating the main story with each character because you don't want everyone you don't want to spoil the ending of each like major end game cauterizing white what's cauterizing slide steals bonus incendiary damage okay oh that's a lot of drops yeah arms race with skills with action skill or rogue lands type mode and the rewards I think the rewards are really really important i don't think it should be exclusive loot i think exclusive exclusive loot made sense in the context of arms race and it does make a little bit of sense here and you can but i don't want exclusive loot to be the main reward i think the main reward for a successful completion of the run should be massive iridium stockpiles i want this mode to be the, the one of the best ways to farm iridium in the entire what that's our first times eight okay Everybody, I don't know the actual damage numbers, but we're going to check it out. Oh, man. Okay, so. Body accessories. We didn't get the accuracy one, but we are still a go. Mm, we're missing We're missing a barrel accessory. Okay, there's our grip. The grip is reload time, minus 5%. Minus a whole bunch of damage. But it's the grip that gives us the projectiles, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. Yep, so this grip, despite being minus 30 damage, is actually the one we want. This is a good four grip. This is okay, wow. This is so close to being like so close to being an absolute god roll. So we're missing one barrel accessory. So keep in mind, damage 10% and melee 60%, okay? So let's go to one that we know has all the parts we need. So this this cryo one. If the if it would let me hover it why will it why won't it won't let me it won't let me hover these guns classic borderlands though and i didn't say a better ui okay so barrel which one are we missing the fire rate barrel honestly it might be better without the fire rate barrel i want to see something and we can try it out right here right now we're gonna do a little bit of terror shenanigans. Okay, so let's put on our Vladoff Company Man. Let's put on our Bouncy Frag Grenade. Let's get our Times 8 Monarch out here, okay? Where are you? There you go. It's the one with the sawed off, or the one with the, without the stock, right? So we have our Times 8. Let's reload. Okay. I'm not expecting to get any fire rate skills. Let's get our fire, but let's get our, our terror up a little bit here. Ooh, I really don't know if I can sustain it. Keep our terror up, three stacks. Wow. I think that if we, I, I, it's just like to me, maybe it could shred like really, really hard. Consumes two ammo per shot. It's just insane. Let's get double the projectiles. If I could get 
bigger mag size. I still want the times eight because I still want to try it. Toss my action skill. And if I can get maybe a, a super soldier or something that has ammo regen on it, that could be kind of good too. Okay. All right, so this is really close to a, a god roll. I think missing out on the fire rate doesn't matter a ton. The damage is as high as it can be. Which is a really interesting. This is high as a, I think this is as high as a times eight can go. I'll check that on loot lemon real quick. Okay, so this is the highest damage you can get on a times eight. It's not the fastest fire rate, but because now I know that I can't really sustain it even with terror, I actually think I want fire rate even more now. I want to be able to burn through the magazine, reload really quickly, and then burn through it again to drop bosses in the split as fast as possible. So, although this is a really nice roll, um, I am missing accuracy on the body, and I'm missing fire rate on the barrel. So it could be much better. And foregrip and rail are, are, are great. So this is going to be our one to beat right here. This is max damage. A very useful times eight monarch but is missing some some crucial stats so or honestly not even crucial stats just those min max stats that we're really looking for to be the absolute god roll let's keep going okay so that's so i wanted to say that for the roguelite mode we have massive iridium as our reward i want that to be the biggest place that you go for iridium so like i think that there should be in-game places that might give you slightly more slightly better um but as far as how to farm iridium outside of game or like to have a way that you can prove that like you're a good player and if you're a better player you get to earn more iridium i don't think you can go wrong by having a roguelite mode the where did my only dragon go? There it is. I think a roguelite mode could be really, really cool. For that purpose. Like, oh wow, you beat you beat a roguelite mode? There's a ton of iridium for your efforts. Like, great job out there. We toss them up. I, I'm having more success when I toss them up a little bit higher. There we go. So if we can get just a ton of iridium from, from the roguelite mode, if make, but make it hard. That's the key. Can't make it easy. It's got to be hard. The final bosses have maybe rotating final bosses. I, I think if you want a model of how to do it correctly, watch any one of my Rogue Lands videos. I think that that mod does it extremely well. You can watch any one of my Rogue Lands videos if you want like a good model of think of how I think it should work. Wow, that's a that's shred right there. Monarch me. Spark, spark plug static charge. The spark plug is cool. But I don't think I'm going to be using this one. Okay. All right. And for number 10. A PVP mode. And for here, I put two options. I put both with question marks a race style mode where we were two players um race on opposite ends of a of like a of a zone and it'd be kind of cool if if you and like a teammate were like we're sprinting through a zone like this who like clearing it out in between you was like this 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 almost transparent barrier not going away is he almost transparent barrier where you can see their progress a little bit but you can't uh, influence it in any way. Like, you can't throw grenades over the top. You can't do anything like that. So you can see where your enemy is at as far as uh, time. That could... Being able to invite people to your session and then have, like, a PvP mode where you each race through Model 1 takedown side by side could be really, really, really cool. Um, then another mode that I thought of was a... was the, a Halo-type mode, where if you remember the old Halo games... You would have to pick up your weapon uh, from the ground. That's where you found your weapon. And once you pick up your ground weapons, you could um, use them, right? 
make the same kind of game mode as Border in, in Borderlands, where you run around and like, oh my gosh, I found the Jacob shotgun, and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, now I'm gonna go after him. But he picked up a Malawan pistol, and so he's just trying to burn you down. Like a very simple, just like Borderlands, Borderlands kind of paintbally uh, game mode. I think could be kind of cool. Did he? No way, he always disappears, right? There we go. I think having that. Man, that that uh, that monarch is in my head run free because it's so close to perfect. It's so close to perfect. I kind of want the I kind of want the fire rate, even though I don't want the fire rate. I kind of want the fire rate, and I'll just juice up my reload speed as much as I can. I can't sustain it anyway, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pay the piper. It's like you know what? Yeah, my magazine will empty, but you know what? I'm just gonna reload crazy fast. There we go. Nice. It'll give me the most overall damage. The most overall damage. I think. Hopefully. Okay, so that those are my 10... My 10 wish list items for... For Borderlands 4. Let me know what you think of my list. Um, if I... When I make my next video... After reading comments... I'll be highlighting some responses. Or all responses, depending on how many I get. Uh, and if I get too many responses, then I'll be picking the best one. So make sure you leave, you know, some some go to your comments. Let me know. Would you take this? Would you take this monarch I just got? It doesn't have the accuracy from its body, and it doesn't have its its fire rate from its barrel. But everything else is perfect. Would you take that as your perfect god roll? Um, let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know what you think of my list. Are there some things that I left out, do you, or do you think some things that I put in there are big yikes? Like someone told me on Reddit when I told them about my one idea to have more, um, more information on the item card. Let me know what's what your wish list wish list items are. My my plan is for these these farming videos to be kind of like a community where I'm farming, you're farming, we're all doing our thing, but we all we talk we talk to each other. You know, we we discuss ideas where you guys put in the comment section things that you think about the game and then I can I can read them aloud and tell you what I think about the game and then people can respond to that and we can have a dialogue over uh, multimedia online you know and if it turns into something you know maybe we'll get your box's attention they say they listen right they say they listen so I don't know I'm not the biggest creator in the world especially on like a, a day three monarch farm this is it, I, to be fair I completely get why people don't turn into like a, a day three of a farm or day four or day 17 of a farm, right? Completely understand. And why m the most people tune in for day one and the finale. But the people that are here, you, the, you guys are the ones who comment anyway. Like there's the people that, are, that, <laughs> that go to those videos and watch only those videos. They're not the people commenting. So I don't, I don't necessarily think that this, this is a bad time to be like, hey, like, let's get some comments going about what you guys think about um, BO4 wish list or what plan anything honestly and we just talk about it you know I put it up on screen and I can I can put it up on screen relatively easily it does take me a bit of time and may make my videos come out a little bit less often but having I think having the the comments up on screen adds a whole different element like a, a good element to to the discussion videos, for sure. Okay, he should be gone. One of those should hit. Yeah, see ya. Yeah, we're at 164 runs. We are 58 minutes into the video. We will go to the hour mark, and then we will call it. Hope that you guys had a good time watching. I had a good time listening. I had a good time, I had a good time talking. I need to get some water, though. Yeah, let's go. And hopefully by the next episode, I'll have myself a Peregrine class mod. But you know what? Do not count on it. I'm busy, busy boy. Oh, nice one shot. Let's go. Unfortunately, I'm not too sure what's causing me to one shot and what's causing me to not one shot. Uh, if you guys have any ideas, let me know again in the comment section. In that comment section. And if you're not subscribed and you got to this point in the video, subscribe. Like, you made it all the way to the end of the video. You might as well subscribe. And if you're sleeping, uh, wake up and subscribe. If you are happy on side monitor, um, if you have autoplay, let the autoplay go. Just let that autoplay take you to my next video, hopefully. Here we go.
We're here for the long haul. We're, we're doing the thing. So if you guys like Borderlands, this is a good place to be. I'll, I'll be real honest with you. This is a good place to be if you like the game. Okay, we'll do one more run. So we're at 167. We'll be two-thirds of the way to 200. Got a very close to God roll. I bet. I just don't think it's quite there. Get that one hit. Get that one hit. For the fans! Let's go! Nice. No legendary. I don't expect one for a while. 167 runs. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button. Subscribe to see more videos like this one. And I'll see you all in the next one. See ya!